Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 here in the Rizu Forest. We're going to try one out. I've added a little bit of extra money in uh, just from the loan. So uh, we're going to get one of these now and we're just going to go and try it out a little bit. I'm not going to do very much with it because we're actually doing bailing on this series, but I do want to just test that one out. Um, there's a big old rake right here, which is pretty cool. Um, it's got a an 8.5 meter width on it, um, but we know what rakes do, so we don't need to worry about that one. There's a standard baler here. There's nothing particularly unusual about that one. Uh, this one over here is looks a little bit different to the others, but it's a bale shredder. So again, a useful little tool, um, but not one that we'll be using in this series. Looks very nice. And then there's a mower. And this is actually one that I'm going to try out. Because this mower here is 6.3 meters wide. So if we were to go and get a front mounted mower as well. Because this one goes off to the side. You don't you don't drag this behind you. Um, this one goes off to the side. And it's a really big side hauled mower. Uh, much bigger than most of the ones that we're used to. So I figured that we could give this one a go. And we'll have a front-mounted mower. Now, the front-mounted mower that we've got at the moment is the one with that set. Uh, so let's go and have a look and see. We're using these, the Kongskilda. Yeah, Kong, Kongskilda. Um, the, this one here is awful with the hired help. It is absolutely terrible with the hired help. And we know that this one is terrible with the hired help. So this one goes out at 12.3 meters. So it is a big, wide machine. It's wider than anything else. But uh, this was straight into the comments. As soon as I first got this, I see I started seeing comments come up. This is the worst machine in the game for using with hired help. The hired help just can't cope with it. And we have already seen that. This one here is 3.5 meters. Um, with the 6.3 on there, that's going to give us 9.8 meters of cutting width. If we go with that one, um, 3.5. 6 that would make 9.9 .9 meters i wonder if we could have the l hoe because this is a front mounted mower i don't know how far off to the side we can get the vermeer one so we're going to get that one a second and we'll see how far off to the side we can get this because i'm wondering if we can couple it up with this one right here so that one does 30k and that one does 22. i only need to get the 22 because this one is limited to 22 as well so we get the the stevie version right there we can color it a little bit uh, but that's a front mounted mower right there so we won't be able to use the whole of the thing so we're not going to have 7.3 meters coupled up with the 6.3 on there so we're not going to have a 13.6 meter cutting width but we could get pretty close. So let's get that one as well. Buy that bad boy there for 52,000. And this one we've already got. And we will head back down. I'm, to be honest, I'm getting a little bit fed up with this. I mean, the only downside, like, oh, and by the way, there's been, we've, I've updated 1.7. So if you update to 1.7, the theory is the issue that everybody's been having with um uh the the, the what he calls the the who's the jigs the the missions the mission's not working all of the issues that people have been having with that that should be sorted out um they have said that they've um, done some work on that so that that should be sorted out now because I've got an updated to a new version of the game, obviously we're going to be having this horrible, janky um, lag coming in for a little bit. This is it is it is really bad. This I really love the mower, and especially the fact that it does leave it in windrows. But I also really despise this mower as well because of the rear wheel steering and the fact that it doesn't lock straight when you're reversing. And that would fix it. I mean, I don't care if that wouldn't happen in real life. I honestly don't. Um, for gameplay purposes, that would fix all of the issues with this mower, is if those wheels would lock on reversing. But they don't, so this is what we're going to have to live with. Now, I'm not going to be keeping these two mowers here that I'm about to hook up as our permanent mowers, because... 
of the fact that we have um, we can't leave this in a windrow so because of that it does mean that it's going to be like a little bit more difficult to deal with but I'm just going to go and do like a little test with this even if we just leave the grass on the ground or something I like that we can turn this around so sharp that's really good that's going to be very very useful and we'll put that one on the front now I'm assuming that we can actually fold that thing in half let's lift it up like that and then fold it excellent alrighty then Okay, so let's get this out to the field and check it out. And then we can check out the Vermeer um, baler as well, the self-propelled one. I'm probably going to find a way to use that relatively soon in a series. Um, probably we'll get the Vermeer self-propelled baler going in our time-lapse series somehow, some way, I think. I think that could be good. Uh, so first of all, let's go to this one and let's see what this one does. So he's unfolding like that. And then he twists out to the side. Now, do I have... I do. I have options to swing it back around manually so it comes in a bit tighter. So I'll bring you out like that. And really, we don't need this great big wide mower that we've got on the front. That's not going to help us any. It not help us at all, actually. But there is a reason that I thought that this might be useful having the front mower like this. Because of going around the corners. Now, most of the corners that we're going to go around aren't going to be much of a problem. Let's start them both up, lower that down, and then the back should, yeah, the back will drop down as well, and we will go on round the corners, and it's because of the fact that it will, the, the way that it swings round, that is, I think, what's going to be good about having the slightly wider front mower on here. Okay. That front mower is kind of dragging my wheels around when I'm trying to turn sharp. So it's slightly against it there. The Vermeer mower is all the way out as far as it can. Let's have to take a look at the options. So we've got lift mower. I'm on the front one at the moment. Lift, fold. It doesn't have any kind of windrow option on that one. We go to the back one. Fold, lift. Let me lift them both up a minute. Why did it turn one off? Turn them both off. Fold, lower, turn on. No. So it doesn't have any windrow option. There's no windrow options on these. But I'll start them both up. And we'll head off again. So, I mean, this front-mounted mower is actually pretty good. And see the back-mounted mower this size again I think it's something that would be quite useful I'm gonna do one more thing I'm going to test the well actually I think we'll get just temporarily the um, let's lift that right it's shutting off the front mower when we lift it for some reason and I'm not quite sure why I lower it back down it doesn't change anything so I'm gonna bring it up to that point and then I'm going to press H here no field yeah I, I don't believe you I think there is a field there and I think you just don't want to work so I'll bring that one there and we'll see how the hired help just copes with this whether it can cope with this slightly oversized the slightly oversized bit on the front would make a big difference, I think, going around the outside edges of the field. You're not going to have those strips being left behind, and you'll have everything being cut. So there is that. I mean, it doesn't look very realistic having both of these on it together. 
but I still think it could work. And I really love the tight turn angle that the Vimeo mower has got. That looks absolutely fantastic. That really works well. And I'll be honest, this DLC, it doesn't really introduce anything new into the game. It's another mower, it's um, another baler, another rake, and so on. But the this rear-mounted mower here, the wide mower, a trailed one as well. We don't have a lot of options for trailed mowers. We do have the one that I just got rid of, which I really don't like. But trailed mowers are somewhat limited. So there is that one which is here. Um, it is difficult for me to be 100% objective because obviously I get the DLCs for free. And so that makes a difference. And then i got to try and look at this and think, would I be willing to pay this for this? But then I've also got to be honest with myself. I don't play this game for fun for me anymore because I do so much recording and so on and I spend so many hours playing this game when I'm working so okay real life interrupted there for a minute um, so I do a lot of I, I play this game an awful lot for recording videos and as a result I don't play this game for myself anymore so I've got to try and think back to when I did play this game for myself, purely for myself, and not for anything related to work. Um, would I then have considered this to be value for money? And if the pack didn't contain that self-propelled baler over there, I would say no. But the pack does contain that self-propelled baler. The mower is different enough from any of the other mowers that we have uh, access to that I would consider this one to be a very, very nice addition. We're going to go and try out the rake just on this bit in a minute. Um, so I, I like both of these. I'm going to do one more thing here a second. I'm just going to stop that one there. And I'm going to unhitch this front mounted mower because I'm not keeping this set up this this is going so that front mounted mower I'll dump that one off there a second I don't know if it will let me dump it off like that or if I'll have to oh I've got to unfold it All right well that's interesting to note this one has to be unfolded to be able to be unhitched so we're going to drop that one off there. I'm curious what this mower here is going to be like. Just us working this one on its own. Just for one more little test run with it. And I'll bring you to there. Mower down. And off you go. I like trailed mowers. I have a bit of a soft spot for trailed mowers anyway. So, I, I mean, I, I, I do. I, re I really like this mower. I think this is a really good mower. And we're just going to watch the hired help turn round now, having just got this mower on, and see what it's like with getting round and lining up and everything. I really like the ability to have that super sharp turn that it's got on it there comes in round and the hired help does look like it's going to be able to line up well let's not judge that too quickly because the hired help does surprise us every now and then by completely messing up the simple task but it hasn't it has done a wonderful job doing the turn around there and it's lined up and mowing the crop rather nicely as well so i like this i like this 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 mower as far as i'm concerned this mower passes buster this this is a a good mower i i like it I'm pleased with it. I would say that this mower itself is some value for money. To decide whether or not the pack as a whole is worth forking out for, we're going to go and test out that baler. So we're just going to stop that one there a minute. And I'm going to fold this one up. So he folds like that, and then he folds up this way as well. There we go. I'll come down and I'll collect the mower here. Grab hold of that one. Start folding that one up as we drive along. 
And we're going to take these back to the shop. We're going to sell them. We're going to buy temporarily the new rake. And we're going to rake up this little bit that we have just gone and cut. And then once we've done that, we will test the new baler. Hopefully this map will stop being too juddery soon once we've gotten a little bit of gameplay going on it. It is better to drive around the entire map and you basically just reload it all in again. Exit, save and come back, but I'm too lazy to do that. Um, repaint, yes. Repair, yes. Sell. So we're going to get rid of this because I've got something in particular that I do want to buy now. Um, I think it's just going to fit better with what we're doing overall. Repair that one and sell. And then we've got this one here as well. And this one doesn't need any repairing or repainting at all. Just sell it for 46000 Okay, so we've got 252000 at the moment. We will go here and we will go to the rakes. The wind rowers right there. And there we have the Vermeer one, just like that. I will test this out with the working speed mod and we'll take this up to a fast working speed. Obviously, this is not going to be the base game, but I think that'll be all right. Uh, eight and a half meters wide on this rake. So let's test this one out. This is a trailed rake rather than a mounted one. And then if we come back around over here. I've got a mod that allows me to run the camera through, sh uh, through, through sheds. And you can see right there, it removes, as it first comes through the shed, it removes wheels and structures and stuff as it comes through, as the camera passes through the shed. But there's also a mod that we've got that allows us to have these extra options in here. And this one does the camera collision. So I don't know if I remove my other camera mod, whether or not the camera collision thing on here will actually stop it from doing that weird bit where it removes everything just on the edge of the camera view. I haven't actually tested that yet because I keep forgetting about it until I get in game and I actually with the camera through something. So that's something that we need to test. Okay, so the wheels come down on that one. That's actually pretty good. I didn't even realize it was gonna do that. And we'll bring you up here and we'll start working you on here. So let's lower that down there. The hired help, I suspect, is not really going to like this rake. Now, obviously, I'm going much faster than the rake is designed for, which is why I'm leaving little bits behind because it is going to dance around. And some rakes will do that anyway. If, you, if they dance around too much, they will leave bits behind. So, we'll take that into account. But, I mean, the rake does actually seem to be working just fine. Now, as this is a pulled rake, we wouldn't be able to couple this up with a baler or anything like that. Um, you can sometimes do that with some of the other tools. But this is obviously not going to be happening on this one. So, I'm going to bring this rake over to here like this. I press H on there and I'm going to start this one running up and down the field just on this bit so that we can do a little bit of a test and have this one running. And then I'm going to test out that self-propelled baler. We're going to drive it around a little bit and we're going to bale up a couple of bales. I don't know if I've got anything that I can actually put the bales into. So that one's going to get to there. I'm really hoping that it turns and doesn't try to rake the windrows. We'll find out in a minute. It's doing a very wide turn here, which is concerning. Is he going to try and tell me that the windrow is the bit that he wants to do, or is he going to go? He's going to go to there. Excellent. He's going to he's going to rake up that windrow. But then he's just going to keep... Okay, that's good. He has managed to figure that bit out. But that wouldn't necessarily be down to the rake. You always have those issues when raking and working a field 
anyway, which is why I will generally do two rounds around the outside and then remove them if I want a rake working at the land work in the middle because it seems to be very rare that a rake is actually able to cope with doing anything other than that. You're going to come around here. Obviously, these windrows are slightly bigger than the, other, the previous ones. I want to rake this up. Now, I mean, this is June, actually. So we can leave the windrow on. A, you know what? Let's just leave the rest of it on the ground. It's not going to matter. We tested out the rake. We've seen that one working. We know what it's like. It's a rake. Um, it's pretty good. It's a trail rake. Uh, slightly different style to what we've seen before. Some people really like this particular style of rake. As far as value for money on the whole Vimir pack goes, this rake doesn't do anything for me personally. It's not a style of rake that I would choose to use anyway. So for me personally, the rake, do, it neither adds, but it, it, it doesn't add anything to the pack, but it doesn't actually take anything away from the pack either, to be fair. So... It's, it's just kind of, it is what it is. Um, it's a rake. Now, the next test that we want to do is we want to go, oh, by the way, um, silage additive. There was a issue, I think, with silage additive on forage harvesters. Uh, that's now been fixed with the 1.7 update. Right. The great thing, excuse me, the great thing about this one it's a turning circle. You can literally turn on the spot. The pickup is under the rear wheels. It's not at the front. This was one of the first things that people pointed out that would be wrong with this machine. Is the pickup being back there, you wouldn't be able to see stones very well. You wouldn't be able to see stones near the pickup and that could cause issues. As I understand it, that screen that you've got, I don't want to press C and jump in cab because it freezes the game for so long when you try and jump in cab. I'm going to do it. Let's see. Okay, I'm instantly gone to the sounds. It may have already switched over on the actual video. I don't know. There we go. Right, we're now in cab. And... Slowly does it. We can look around. And you can actually see the camera. Right. I've ironed out the issues. There, you can see the camera up there. So, okay, it doesn't... I can't see, but obviously the, that's a static picture up there. So you can't actually see it, but that you, there is a camera in real life. You can see what it's doing. So let's just drive forward a bit, and we'll see what this feels like in cab. I don't like in-cab driving in this game anyway. I never have. But that is actually pretty cool. I can imagine what this would be like in real life. And I would really love to have the opportunity to drive one of these in real life. I think that would be absolutely fantastic. So, on the outside there, you can see that it does raise and lower the pickup quite nicely. Let's go and do some bales. We have on this one options for bale sizes. We can do 150, uh, 125, 150 and 180. So we can go all the way up to the very largest bales. Let's bring it in here. We've got some wide windrows here that we're going to test out. We're going to go with the largest bales. Start the machine up. There we go. Lower that one down. And off we go. It does travel over the ground marginally faster than a base game vehicle. I don't like that the pickup width on this one seems to be quite harsh as far as if it's slightly out to the side it does seem to be missing a little bit but this is a very big windrow that we've got right here. Um, I don't think we need to do more than one bale. This is just in case we can't put the bale anywhere. So what we'll do is if I just shut that off a second, then we can drive fast. And we'll take this single solitary bale down here. Because I don't know if I can drop this bale in here. I don't want to put it in it. Ooh! Can I put a grass bale into our hay? 
find out. He's, he's got a lovely speed on this one. I would really like to drive this one in real life. So the windrow, you, you, it does seem that you've got to be a little bit careful with the windrow, but I know a lot of players actually really like that anyway. There's so many mods where the windrow is quite, you know, strict on it, and this one does actually seem to be one of those. Um, but there's a lot of players who seem to like that anyway. I personally don't, and that is something that would put me off using this one unless I could alter it to be slightly wider than what the pickup is at the moment. I mean, it's a fairly wide pickup anyway, but we've got really wide windrows from what our mowers have dropped on the ground. Now, I don't know if I want to risk dropping it. You know, I'm not going to drop it here. I'm going to take it over to our silo and I'm going to try and drop it there because I've no idea if it's going to be able to drop in here. I don't want to put it in for the cows because all that will do is just take up space that the hay is supposed to be using. So I just want hay in for the cows. I suppose actually I could just sell the bale if I put it there over that bit. Let's do that. Then we... Because I'm not planning to use any bales here, I reckon if I drop this one over here, it should just sell. That's what I'm hoping. Let's go and have a look. Where can we drop this bale to sell it? I'm going to go down to here. It's... I mean, it is this bit that we use for selling the silage, grass. Yeah, we can do it here. Right. I'll bring the bale back over here so we can have a look at it. And then we can sell it in a minute. We can just sort of roll it over the finish line. So to open, I would guess it is just Y. It's a standard button. That one pops out. Out it goes like that. It nudges it back ever so slightly. I really like that. It's also very quick for loading and unloading. That's also really good. Overall, I like this one. I do. I actually really like this. And I'm thinking I might try and have this in one of the series. Because this is different. This, this is definitely something different. This is not something that we've seen before. And I genuinely do like this machine now. What's it going to be like pushing the... Right, it doesn't like pushing the bale by going forwards because it's just trying to mount up on top of the bale. So if I bring that one back around the other way, and I go there, that bar down the bottom is actually pushing the bale, which is good. I like that. I've only got to just nudge it a little bit. Get it across that finish line. It should sell. Ah. Apparently it doesn't want to sell. Why won't you sell? Uh, I did forget that I can actually pick bales up. Alright, so you're not selling there. Do we... Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.